I got a job with the mob making cheese. Doing some pickups, deliveries, and transport keys. Yeah, they got me like a funky money. I'm driving around town with 10 kilos of summer drunk cheese. And I'm holding a suitcase with a half a million dollars on my lap in front of my face. And I'm trying to ignore it. But sometimes I get tempted to go deaf and make a bump for it. The sort of all makes me shiver. Damn, what if I get caught to find me from It was more like, uh, Basically, when Jason and Anthony left Alien and did their own thing, and then I seen what they were doing, I was immediately drawn to it. With the Girl and Chocolate family, I guess, I was just kind of feeling like I've been there so long, and it was just kind of, uh, I was feeling a bit stale, needing something a little bit fresh. And I really liked what F.A. was doing. I liked the kids on the team. I liked the way they were skating. I liked the, it, to me, it just, it just stood out like a little bit more different. Um, uh, they were just appealing to me, that's it. And then uh, one day I just saw Jason at Supreme and we just got to speaking and uh, it came up and it just felt like a, a, a refreshing move for me. It was just like a gut feeling inside that I loved what they were doing. I liked, I liked the way their skating looked and it was a fresh, new, small vibe reminding me of the old days and that's it. I didn't see the video for a while. Like it took me a few months to check it out and then once I did that's when I was kind of like wow this is pretty like the, the like I said it was just like the gut feeling I got once I saw the video I just it felt good I liked what they were doing I liked the way the, the skating looked and I was just drawn to it it was um it was cool and I was really like proud of Jason proud of Anthony psyched on those guys for doing their own thing and I gotta, I gotta be honest like when I first saw that when I saw that first ad I just it was like I was blown away I was fucking I was dying like with the uh with the old uh, school photos and um I was like, this is amazing. This is just like, you know. Um, it actually was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I hadn't spoken to him at all for a long time, and then uh, I just happened to see him. Uh, yeah, I think we, we got there, and I seen him, we spoke, and then we ended up filming the scene, and then we spoke again afterwards, and that's when things just started, you know, snowballing, you know. Just how you feeling, what are you doing, like what's going on, and you know. Um, so, videos, just filming videos uh, and sending them to, there's like a few, a few sponsors and one of them was Lucero that I sent like, like sponsor me tapes to and um, he happened to call me up and uh, that was it, you know, can you imagine that? Like, like as a kid, like Lucero calling my house, I was like, I was bugging out and uh, so that's how it happened, just like by uh, filming videos and sending them out. I must have been around maybe 15, 16 or something. Like, I, I remember it completely. Like I was in my mother's bedroom, I got on the phone. This is John Lucero. I was like, holy shit. Like, you know, heart was racing. And uh, so it was awesome. And then like, you know, getting boxes sent from like John and, and uh, we would uh, just be filming, go skating every day and we'd document anything we did. And then on, on top of that, some comedy stuff and just like a lot of, so there's a lot of stuff. There's, John must have at least like, 15 tapes of, of me and of like dorking around and skating and it's like half the stuff I wouldn't even want to see right now. <laughs> it was a big deal, I guess, because it seemed like every, you know, once that, after that day, like Lucero found out, next thing you know, I was like, I had a pro model, you know, so put two and two together, it must have been a big deal. Like it must have just, I mean, because back then, I mean, nothing was really done over it. It was only like a cake flip and an alley or something. So anything tried or whatever, like almost landed or, or landed, I mean, everybody knew about it. So it would put a person on the map, you know. That day was so dead, like there was nobody there. It was only like a few of us. It was like me, Keenan, Ben, Liversedge, Matt Pales, and Jamie Thomas. And I didn't really think about like, like when I left, I remember getting on the plane and going home and I didn't, I remember I was psyched, like, you know, wow, the guns, gap, blah, blah, because it was a big, it was a historic spot, a historic gap, you know what I mean? It wasn't really until the ad came out, the Thunder ad, you know? It's, it's funny because I recently did an interview for a, um, a website with uh, Jason. It took me back to the old days and like what, it made me think about what were like the golden days, the, the days that I remember the most, that I admire the most, and it was, Pretty much those days, like the days of, of first moving to uh, California, being on, on Black Label, going to all the spots for the first time, skating with Jason you know, every day. It just brought back so many memories of like, what, like how things were and what we used to do. Him being such a little kid, you know what I mean? And me kind of just like being a little bit, feeling a little bit older and like almost like having to look out for him. 
I don't know, just scooping him up every day at his house and going out skating. He'd show me spots. We skate Huntington High a lot, and then he introduced me to Jeremy Ray and Jonas Ray, and we'd go out skating all the time. And to watch Jeremy skate back then live, like every day, we'd go out every day. Jeremy would always come through, and to watch him skate was amazing, dude. Like, I mean, this is the stuff I've been thinking about lately. If we saw like a triple set on the side of the road, we'd be like, yeah, let's pull over, check it out. And then he'd be the first guy to jump down it, and no problem, no stress. So those are the those are the days I really admire, like the uh, the, the Huntington Beach days, um, Black Label, and then came 101. 101 was good, obviously because a Nadis. I started talking with Nadis, and um, that was through Dave Schlossbach. And once he hooked me up, me and Jason up with uh, Nadis, and gave it gave him our footage that we used for Snuff, and then not as calling us and talking to us. It was like, that was, that was insane. I mean, first it was Lucero, then it was Nottis. And, uh, you know, ev not everybody loves Nottis, you know. So to, get a, to, to be talking with him, uh, end up riding for his company, it was like, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't even have words for it, really. Just felt great, you know, it felt awesome. And, uh, but like also uh, really intimidating. I mean, if I had to like do, go to his house to do something or shoot an ad or hook up with him or, like, I couldn't even talk almost. It was, you know, because he was like a superstar to me, you know what I mean? So, Ray just asked. He just said, do you want to do something? I was like, yeah, why not? Um, it's like, let's do a little collection. It was as simple as that. He just asked. And then I was, I was down. I wanted to do some work. I wanted to, like, you know, just get into something. I wanted to make sure it was true to me and, like, what I like. And, like, a sweater vest or, like, I, I've always loved sweater vests. Like, little things like that. Like, nothing nothing major, but keep it simple. And, mm -hmm. and pretty much all of the T-shirts are in, like, they relate to me so in some way. Like, one of the T-shirts is basic, based, like, you know, off of a grave digger, you know, um, quote. Or, and, uh, and one of them is, like, a retro graphic from an from a old movie that it's, like, one of my favorite movies from back in the day. Like, uh, like a, 70, a movie from 1979. And uh, we use the same font and like, you know, just it's, uh, it's like some old retro stuff. And, uh, and there's another shirt that's uh, based off of uh, the Birmingham Soccer Club because my mother's from Birmingham, England. So just everything is rela in relation to me, which I make, I make sure that, you know, that's important. That's always important, you know, first and foremost. I mean, when you're working with a friend, you know, it's uh, sometimes they say it's bad, but I mean, I don't think so. I think it's good. Cause I could stress about shit and like you know not feel too bad. I'll be calling right up like last minute, like right, listen. All right, I know I know we have the shoot tomorrow, but like I want to make sure we're on the same page. All right, like what do you what do you, what do you want to do? Like what do you? Uh, so I know I can do that with Ray. I can call him anytime, text him. Hopefully he gets back to me right away. We'll meet at Starbucks somewhere on Long Island or something, and just like shoot the shit. And so it's cool. It's nice to have a, a good friendship and then also be creative at the same time, work, you know, work-wise. So.